Hey guys, so as some of you may know, I generally use CoreOS for my container uh, server deployment stuff. Though I am always looking in ways of streamlining that. Um, and um, one of my viewers, uh, Evgeny Fuko, uh, I hope I got that right. I actually studied Russian at St. Petersburg State University. I don't put that in my CV, but <laughs> I've forgotten everything. Um, <laughs> What I was going to say, so he, he pointed out Rancher. Actually, Rancher has been on my radar. And um, I quite like how it's, you know, a minimalistic sort of thing um, for just running Docker containers and that the, the, the image size is so small. Um, and it comes with a web interface or the deployment thing, uh, the server thing. So, yeah, I, 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 um, I got... The server thing going. It wasn't very easy because DigitalOcean and 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 the usual suspects don't have a quick way of doing it. And I ended up doing it on on ByteMark, which involved uh, mounting the ISO and unmounting it and then installing it. And uh, and then yeah, it was it was it was a bit complicated. Um, but I got it running. And then. Um, then I hit the problem with running the server. I wanted to originally run the server on my laptop, but since my laptop is behind a NAT, um, I, I, I think both the server and the, 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 the client, the rancher client, needs to be on like a real IP. So that was a bit, um, I, I might be mistaken, but that's I think the problem I ran into. And that was, that, that was a bit pissy because I was kind of hoping it would be a little bit magical I could minister things through through um, through a NAT, um, and then yeah, when you log in, ooh, um, it's un unprotected. But the cool thing is that you can actually um, set up GitHub, which is awesome because I don't want to set up another user account. Once you set up um, uh, GitHub, also. I, I kind of wanted it to obviously also look at all my GitHub repositories and maybe figure which ones have a Docker file so that I can start using them. Unfortunately, it doesn't do that. But anyway, this is what the user interface looks like, and I think it's quite good. Maybe it's a little bit slow. You can. It's also got quite nice, uh, like, graphy things. I guess I'm trying to show you a graphy thing here. Look at these graphy things. Yeah, ultimately they probably don't tell you anything you need to know in reality. But anyway, um, I, li I like the interface, but uh, it's got a few issues. Um, like, who we do I have again? Like just, okay, the first issue that I ran into is that you, when, you, when, you, when you create a, a little, 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 when you create a service, huh, when you put in the image there, even though I had this, always pull image before creating it. it didn't pull it it didn't pull it so um, I had but I did find out that when it was just like continually activating I when I did like SHH in and pull it it then started running so something there's a bug there there's a bug there for sure Um I'm not sure what the difference here between user and system is never mind the the other thing that that, that disappointed me is that there's no real way to sort of trigger an upgrade and it wasn't like a webhook. I mean, this is a web interface. Come on, let's have a webhook, please. Uh, I did tweet about it and the guy got, got back to me saying I should look into cow cowbell and then I had a little search in the catalog and I couldn't find it. So cowbell is supposed to help you do this, but I kind of wanted it integrated into the default interface, you know. Um, but yeah, you can trigger an upgrade, and I'm, I guess that does a pull, but I have no confidence it's actually going to do a pull. But yeah, yeah. Another thing I didn't like about it is that it doesn't seem to, um, it doesn't seem to mirror w what I'm actually running on the on the on the Docker command line. I was kind of hoping that this would be like a one-to-one -one mapping, but it, it turns out it's not. Ouch. So yeah, I didn't like that. And yeah, I, I think I miss system D. I, I kind I I think the the way that Rancher keeps the container going on reboot and all the stuff is is through some sort of like Docker like service control thing. But I kind of miss system D in this respect because I'm quite used to service files now and quite 
and um, and most importantly with Sift D, I like the logging actually, and I'm not impressed with the logging here. I didn't see a nice logging interface. So yeah, like when it comes to deploying services, logging missing, way to rate way to upgrade um, by a webhook um, sort of thing missing. Um, nicer GitHub integration uh, missing. Uh, I did notice I, I was expecting I didn't try this load balancer uh, but I should do shouldn't I w would be nice if they did SSL with uh, let's encrypt let's encrypt anyway I, I think this is a good start nonetheless I'm, I'm not dismissing Rancher I actually will definitely get it running again uh, on another machine but I'm, I just did this video quickly because I, I will be shutting I will be shutting down this machine here. I'm pretty sure I will be, because what I set out to—I mean, it's in the UK and I'm in Singapore for a start. But yeah, um, yeah, that's my feedback about Rancher, guys. If if you know something that's I don't know more to my taste uh, or solves my problems with container deployments. Then please let me know. Uh, I guess I'm going to be still sticking with Core, core OS, although I kind of wish it had a web hooky thing too. And and um, what else do I wish about Core OS? It had a nice web interface and maybe a bit more minimalistic. But yeah, Rancher shows promise. So let's let's see how this goes. Hey, thank you for watching. Please give me a like.